Hi, Ryan Schmidt here. In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the operations of an intra aortic balloon pump. For this video, I'm going to be using the CardioSave Hybrid by McKay. Okay, let's get started. To power on the balloon pump, press this button here. And when you receive the lines from the sterile field, they're inserted here. This line is where helium is shuttled back and forth, and this is the fiber optic cable. The EKG line and pressure monitoring lines are connected here. This blue line is only for the purpose of this video as it goes to the simulator. If you're slaving from the patient's monitor, those lines are hooked up down here. Now that we have the balloon pump powered on and our ECG and pressure leads attached, we can see our EKG trace and our pressure trace. Before we get started, I want to run through the layout of the two screens. In the upper screen, you'll notice our two traces, our beats per minute, and this will read our diastolic and systolic pressures after we calibrate the pressure transducer. This lower line represents the augmentation of the balloon or the balloon inflation and deflation. In the lower screen, we can control our trigger, our trigger source, our balloon frequency, augmentation, and timing here. You can start the balloon by pressing this button here and stand by to pause it. Okay, I'm going to quickly calibrate our pressure transducer. So we want to open that to atmospheric pressure and press and hold this calibration button. Okay, now that the pressure transducer is zeroed, you can see our systolic and diastolic and mean pressures here. Okay, I'm going to start the balloon now. When you start the balloon for the first time, the balloon has to go through its auto calibration sequence. All right, and here we go. Now that the balloon's pumping, we can see the augmentation in this lower trace. Now that the balloon's on and our pressure transducer is zeroed, I'd like to time the balloon. You can do this one of two ways. You can do it in auto mode, which it's currently in. And this is really nice for time sensitive situations. If you need the balloon to get going quickly, uh, this is the setting to do. However, if you want something more accurate, we can time it ourselves in semi-auto. To manually time the balloon, I'm going to open all menus, and in the right side here, our timing, we can adjust both inflation and deflation. Now the safest place to start for the patient is late inflation and early deflation. You can remember this by the mnemonic LIDE. Late inflation, early deflation. Before I adjust the timing, I'm going to put the balloon in semi-auto mode so we can adjust inflation. Now again, the safest place is late inflation, so I'm going to adjust my inflation to be later 
and early deflation. You'll notice below the pressure waveform the inflation and deflation toggles are moving. So now deflation is going earlier. Another way of remembering this is fiddle to the middle. This phrase refers to these traces moving to the middle. Okay, now I'll restart the balloon now that I'm in the latest inflation and the earliest deflation. And again, this is the safest place for the patient to be, but not the most efficient. Okay, let's adjust our inflation first. In order to do this, I'm going to use the reference line. That's on the bottom here. Now this brings up a line that runs across our pressure trace. What we want to do is we want to put the inflation of the balloon right at the dichrotic notch of our pressure trace. So I'm going to move the reference line to be right on our dichrotic notch. I'm going to adjust it down right about there. Now we want to move or adjust our inflation timing so that we have a V or we just start inflating right at the reference line or dichrotic notch. You'll notice as I move the inflation earlier we get closer and closer to that reference line. If you have trouble seeing, it can also be useful to adjust the balloon pump frequency to 1 to 2. This will mean you will have one assisted and one unassisted beat. Right there is about good. Okay, now let's adjust our deflation. The optimal point for our deflation timing is to get the lowest assisted diastolic pressure. Right, near, right now we're at 52. I'm going to move this deflation timing later and we should see this drop. Alright, now we're at 50, 51, 47. Okay, we're really getting down there. 46, 45. 44. Eventually, this will go back up. Yep, okay, we went back up to 46 now. So that means we've gone too far. So I'm going to adjust this back until we get back to our 44. further. Okay, right about there. Now I want to remember that 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5. That's the optimal point for our deflation timing. Well, on a frequency of 1 to 2, you'll notice that your blood pressure is divided between assisted and unassisted. The diastolic is broken up into assisted and unassisted, and the systolic is also divided between assisted and unassisted the mean is also present. If you're looking at the patient's monitor, you may notice that the monitor doesn't recognize the difference between assisted and unassisted, and it'll assume the diastolic pressure is the unassisted or the higher, the 101. 
Similarly with the systolic, a monitor may recognize the assisted, 47, instead of the unassisted, 53. The mean should always stay the same though. Now that we've timed both inflation and deflation, I'm going to put the balloon back in one to one. This will mean that each beat will be assisted. I'd like to talk about the trigger source for a minute. Your trigger source can be found on the left side of the lower monitor. Right now it's an ECG. This means the balloon is timed based on the ECG. The next column over, labeled sources, allows you to adjust which lead your ECG is reading off of. This can also change if you're slaving from a monitor. Right now we're on lead two. Overall, ECG and lead two is the most common trigger source used. However, if you're in the operating room and you get electrical interference, like this, you will no longer be able to use ECG. You'll notice the balloon is sporadically beating uh, and it has no rhythm to it because its trigger source uh, doesn't allow for it. You can adjust this by using pressure as your trigger. After you switch the trigger, you'll have the balloon is automatically put on standby so you'll have to start it again. You'll notice, even though we don't have a normal ECG rhythm, our balloon is beating appropriately. The pressure source can also be slaved, and to adjust this, you can either have direct, this means the pressure reading is coming from the tip of the balloon catheter, or if it's external, that means if you're slaving from the monitor, you can also use that. However, I'm currently not slaving, so we do not get a pressure signal. An alarm appears, no trigger, uh, pressure trigger. You can either switch back to an ECG trigger or switch back to your direct pressure source. Now the balloon will resume normally. Now I'd like to cover how to wean someone from a balloon pump. Now before you do this, you want to coordinate with your anesthesiologist and other physicians to coordinate your inotrope use and ventilation settings if it's appropriate. Now there's one of two ways to wean someone from a balloon pump. You can either use frequency reduction or augmentation reduction, also known as volume reduction. Let's start with frequency reduction. Right now our patient's in, in one to one. This means every beat is assisted. To wean the patient, I'm gonna reduce our frequency from one to one to one to two. Now this will mean every other beat is assisted. I wanna watch closely for any dramatic changes in the patient's hemodynamics. If they continue to be stable, I can reduce the frequency to one to three. Again, I want to watch for dramatic changes in hemodynamics, blood pressure, and saturation. And we want to monitor this for about 15 to 30 minutes between frequency reductions. Now that I'm at one to three, I can turn the balloon pump off and remove the balloon pump from the patient. So I'll put the balloon in standby and inform the surgeon that he can remove the balloon pump. 
Next, I'll cover volume reduction weaning. I'm back in one to one, and my augmentation is at 100%. To wean this patient from bypass, I'm going to do the similar, take a similar approach. I'm going to reduce my augmentation. This is the volume that the balloon is filled with. And this is on a scale from 0 to 100%. So I'm going to reduce my augmentation to 80%. And again, I want to watch for any dramatic changes in hemodynamics. And in this volume reduction weaning, we also want to give the patient enough time to adjust and assess their hemodynamics. Again, 15 minutes to 30 minutes is good. Seeing no changes in hemodynamics, we can continue reducing the augmentation. And we can do this, again, watching uh, hemodynamic uh, changes closely. We can continue reducing the augmentation until there's no augmentation left. We can put the balloon on standby and inform the surgeon that the balloon can be removed. It's important that the balloon doesn't stay in standby or it's not inflating or deflating because clock can form on the balloon itself and this can form emboli if broken off. So it's important after weaning that the balloon is removed in a reasonable amount of time. Also, the patient's should not be on heparin and should have a normal ACT level when the balloon is removed. I'd now like to cover some alarms you may encounter. For example, one alarm you may encounter is if the balloon catheter line is kinked. An alarm will appear. Balloon catheter restriction. Remove the kink and press start, balloon will now resume. If an alarm appears that you want to ignore, you can turn off the audio by pressing this pause audio. This will give you a certain amount of time where the alarm will not sound. You can also adjust the audio settings in Preferences, Audio. You can adjust the alarm volume here and the volume beep as well. If you get the alarm augmentation below limit set, that means the augmentation alarm you have set at is greater than the augmentation pressure here. This augmentation pressure is the pressure that the balloon is filled to. To adjust the augmentation alarm and get rid of the uh, alarm here, lower your augmentation alarm set limit. Once we're below 114, or our augmentation uh, pressure, the alarm disappears. If you want to lock the screen to avoid anyone tampering with your settings, you can press and hold this lock screen button. This will lock the screen so no one passing by can change any of your settings. This sc uh, locked screen will also appear after a certain amount of time. To unlock the screen, press this button, unlock screen, in the lower left hand corner. And then another alarm you may encounter is if the balloon becomes unconnected. I've disconnected the balloon, an alarm, an, an alarm appears, balloon pump disconnected. Reconnect the balloon, and restart the balloon. After you restart it, 
it'll need to go through its calibration sequence again. Once it goes through the calibration sequence, it'll start up again. If you receive an autofill failure, you can perform another auto refill by holding this button down for two seconds. The balloon will now autofill. The balloon does this naturally every two hours or so when you're running. This does use helium and can lower the helium tank pressure. However, it doesn't uh, use a whole lot of helium and if you receive a helium alarm, low level alarm, you have about 48 hours if you perform, perform no auto refills yourself. To view any of the previous alarms, you can press help available. Alarms will both appear up here on the top monitor and also in the help below screen in the lower monitor. For example, right now we have a low helium alarm. The description here describes the alarm and how to fix it. With a low helium alarm, it suggests replacing the helium tank. You can check the helium tank level here, and you can also check it below the monitor here. Although this tank is still in the green, we can replace it anyway since it's low. To replace the helium tank, first shut off the balloon and come over to the left side panel here. On this lower panel, there will be a helium tank here. Move the panel, here's the tank, slide it out. Now first we'll have to make sure that the helium is shut off. In order to do this, take this key, slide it on the end here and tighten it all the way. Once it's tight all the way, then we can remove the helium tank. Unscrew this on the top, and remove the tank. Okay, grab a fresh tank, Slide it into place, make sure it's all the way back, tighten this down, and now we can open the helium back up. Okay. Put the key back into place. Slide the tank back into place and insert the panel. Now, you can start the balloon back up. If you're planning on traveling with the balloon pump, there's a few things you should consider first. One, you want to make sure that your destination is aware of your arrival and has all the appropriate equipment in place. Secondly, you may want to consider giving the patient new EEG leads and taping them on so they're snug. You're also going to want to make sure that you have all the appropriate equipment for your travels. Having an extra set of batteries is also a good idea. The batteries are located down here. You can see their level of charge by the LED lights that uh, light up above here after you press this button. There's two batteries. If you're planning on removing uh, the balloon console from 
its housing, the plug-in cord does not come with. So if you're transporting just the uh, balloon console, you'll either need to get an attachment or extra batteries. If you're planning on removing the console from the housing here, remove the monitor first, set that off to the side, there's a lever on the bottom, pull that towards you, you'll hear it click. Now to remove the console, pull on this handle here till, it, till this handle is revealed, lift up the handle and remove the console. Lift the black handle and the wheels extend out. After you've pulled the wheels out, you could place the monitor back on top. To do that, push this in and that will lift up the holder for the monitor. On the back of the monitor, there's two black handles. Pull those out and place the monitor back on top. You'll hear a click and you can release the handles. With that, you'll be able to transport your patient. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot. If you'd like to learn more, you can review my study guide which will be attached below. Thank you again for watching.